Hello. 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 It's been so long. Welcome back to the channel, oh, thank Jared. You. Oh, thank you. I was worried I wasn't going to get a repeat invite. Well, you know, you played your cards right. So today, we're just answering some questions. I put on Instagram that we would be making this video and you could ask any questions, whether that was about acting or fitness or our wedding. and Red pandas. All, Maybe there's a question about red pin, isn't there? <laughs> and then we would answer them. So the only screening that I've done with this is just dumb people, but mostly these are all the questions that we got. So no dumb qu no question is a dumb question. No, no. There were some dumb questions. Yep. Inappropriate questions. Yes, exactly. So you inappropriate <laughs> question people grow up. But the rest of these, I mean, some of them were a lot of duplicates, and I didn't like duplicate them. But yep. otherwise, yeah. These are pretty who true. Who answers what and who chooses? Well, you'll see. Yeah, I mean, we're just gonna alternate, and if it's a question for you, then you know you'll answer. Right. It and, yeah. So, okay. Are you ready? Yes. Wait, let me get a sip of water. Famously, my water. Oh, it's my water. <laughs> Our water. Our name. <laughs> if you get that reference, comment down in the comments. <laughs> okay, you wanna go first? Sure. La la la. First dance song. This feels like a spoiler alert. Yeah, right? should we not say? Well, I don't know when you're planning on premiering the video. Yeah, maybe this will come out after. I don't know. It's by a great female artist, I believe. Right? Absolutely. One of her hits. My favorite. Famously not Taylor Swift. Absolutely not. Sorry. That's all you get for that one. Um, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know what would be a fun song? We both enjoy Whitney Houston's Run To You. Not a good first dance song. No, unfortunately not. But a great song. The vibes are off. If you have, if you love I Have Nothing, listen to Run to You because it's like I Have Nothing, but just like on steroids, and nobody knows it. I mean, they know it, but like. You but know, I would say better. It's better. Famously it's better. better. Yeah. Okay. How do y'all remain confident in the gay community given the toxicity? Wow, fascinating. <laughs> confident. <laughs> right off the bat, jumping yes. into. Yes. Um. I don't know. I. I feel that I'm a part of the gay community, but I don't feel like that is my only community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I that's important. I think I feel heavily invested in other communities as well. And so, you know, if the gay community is having some toxicity, which it does, mm. um, I just know that my identity is not tied to that one community. Yeah, this, I, this is actually something that I've been talking with my therapist about because there are parts of gay culture that, you know, like I don't really identify with. Obviously, like, I don't really like going out. I don't really like drinking. I don't do drugs, that kind of thing. So I will get really anxious and definitely not confident when I'm in those situations and I just feel like I'm being judged all the time or whatever. And so I was talking to my therapist about this and he was like, well, it sounds like you kind of judge those people for what they want to do. And if you don't want to be judged, then like, you're going to have to like stop judging them. And I was like, ah, you're yes. brilliant. Yes, <laughs> yes. You're brilliant. <laughs> Yeah. So I feel like really the key to being confident in the gay community is just like not judging anyone for what part of their journey they're on and just trying to run your own race. Right. Yeah. That being said there, I feel like there is like, if we're talking toxicity, there's like racism and fat phobia and like a yeah. lot of issues in the gay community that it's hard to like just ignore. Yeah. But that's maybe where I find myself more at home sometimes in other parts of the, you know, other communities. It feels like a lot of gay people have exclusively gay friend groups. Like we fall into that sometimes, you know, yeah. like, and that's so interesting to me because I do think that it kind of perpetuates this toxicity sometimes. Whereas if you have a little bit more of a varied friend group with like straight people and people of different cultures and whatever than like different ages ages and Huge. professions, yeah. then like some of that toxicity seems to not be as dramatic maybe or maybe it's I don't know it feels like it's not as present yeah so it seems like that variance is helpful right the monoculture that's exactly oh, it right not, like yeah. I understand why gay people want to be around other gay people like it does feel a little bit safer sometimes but I also th sometimes think that can be part of the toxicity so food for thought food for thought moving deep, on deep question Your turn. <laughs> go get her do you want kids yes Right? Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, well, like, don't say yes, right. Uh, but I meant like, I, I meant more like, are you going to say that? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think eventually. Yeah, I think that it's like a ways down the line. Still children ourselves in many ways. Absolutely. And we have nieces and nephews and we're like, we can't right now. <laughs> you're going to say when we have a dog, which is... <laughs> no, I think that's a disservice to real parents. <laughs> it's like, that is. We do love our dog and she is like a daughter to us, but it's not the same thing as raising a child. That's true. But for us, that's where we're at. <laughs> that's where we're at. <laughs> 
<laughs> She's caused us plenty of strife lately. Uh, speaking of, will Meryl be part of the wedding? Um, TBD. We have, we, you know, that's a hope, <laughs> but you know. The goal is definitely for her to carry the rings. Yes, and, and will that come off well? Will that be possible? So, don't know. Spoiler, she will not have the rings. Right. <laughs> Fake rings, but Fake. she doesn't know that. <laughs> We're not gonna tell her. <laughs> no one will say that. Uh, where is wedding and honeymoon? Wedding is in Door County, Wisconsin, if you've heard of it. If you've been The Cape a, Cod of the Midwest. That's what they say, <laughs> of the Midwest being the key part. Oh. Um, there are little towns of like 300 people on a bay of Lake Michigan in Wisconsin, and it's very pretty and very tiny and very um, relaxing. I was told this week that, because I always talk up the Great Lakes, because it's they're kind of like the ocean, but like no sharks, and they're clean and like amazing, right? But someone in Pride Fit this week told me that like Erie and Lake Superior are not that clean. Like they're not really cool because they've oh, had like so much pollution. pollution. But Lake Michigan, great. Still no sharks, <laughs> I would say, and still no salt. No um, salt. Lake Michigan, gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, we love it. Oh, and the honeymoon is in Italy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. the whole Tuscany. Tuscany specifically. Mm -hmm. Italy too big. Famously, big boot. Mm -hmm. I honestly thought that this is not a question for me. <laughs> I read, do Maracas matter? <laughs> yes, they do. Um, they matter a great deal. Yeah. Um, do macros matter? What do you think? Should I put on my little Sam hat? Yeah. I would say um, macros, which are your um, fats, proteins, carbohydrates, if you will, counting the um, percentage of them in your foods and your diet that you eat, can matter if you want to have, you know, better knowledge about the kind of foods you're eating. It helps with weight gain and weight loss sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially if you're trying to build muscle or burn fat. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that the Sam Light would recommend that people count them for, you know, more than two weeks, less than a month. Oh, I was yeah. paying attention. Absolutely. And more than that seems to get a little nitty gritty and can become kind of a, a compulsion yeah. pretty Bandic quickly. And, yeah. um, so they're helpful, but they're not, I mean, we don't do it. And yeah. I don't know many people that do. And out of the three, protein is really the one that I'm most concerned about. Generally, I want people to be able to ballpark their protein grams without having to actually count them each day and just say, did I feel like I got enough protein that day? And that requires you to have a general knowledge of macronutrients. Yes. But counting day to day is maybe well, didant didantic. Is that the word I was looking for? Is that a pedantic? Didactic. I feel like we're being quizzed. Uh, what up the definition? Whatever, whatever, whatever. Pedantic, didactic. <laughs> Something. Semantic. No, <laughs> not that. Um, yeah, but long term. No, it takes the joy out of it. Yeah, yeah. Protein with every we meal, a fruit enjoy... and vegetable with every meal. Exactly. We're good. We want to enjoy what we eat. Okay. Um, how do you have such beautiful teeth? That's for, that's for you. I think we both have pretty lovely teeth. Well, one of my teeth <laughs> is fake, so I have my twin. Don't make, <laughs> yeah. make people guess. Um, I have 35. Let's check that uh, beautiful teeth and one fake tooth. I don't think they're that beautiful, but that's very sweet, right? No, they're very beautiful. We had braces. Mm -hmm. You had braces in college. That's He's really brave. sad. My freshman year of college, I got braces. Show a picture. Uh, yes, this this is the picture. Isn't it lovely? <laughs> it was so embarrassing. I do remember like having my first like time making out with a guy and I had braces mm -hmm. and I was like, this is so embarrassing, you know, like well, it was just like I'm getting to this adult part of my life and yet didn't feel like no. <laughs> but it's I mean it's worth getting done. If you I mean, yeah, it, it improved my confidence a lot, I think. And in terms of like whitening my teeth, I I don't really whiten my teeth. No. We just brush them off. A crest family. Brush, 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 brush. Yeah. yeah. What's the most stressful part of planning a wedding? <laughs> this is a Jeopardy theme song. Um uh, <laughs> planning it yourself, the two of us. Yeah. Planning it out of town, mm. in towns of 300 people year round. People um, just like aren't really on their shit. Yeah. You know, like you'll you'll email someone and they'll email you back like two weeks later and you're like, mm, come on. Yeah, I would say either one of those two are really tough, and having them both together has been very, you know, tricky. Yeah. I, I think that the worst part is just how many very small decisions there are because we very quickly made the big decisions. Those were those are obviously very easy, but then you just don't realize how many small decisions go into the big decision afterward. And I was talking to my Auntie Patrice about this. You have to make the small decisions because people keep asking you about them. Yeah. But asking no more one is more going questions. to remember the color or fabric of the napkins at your wedding. I make the decision. 
I know. It shouldn't even be a decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The caterer should just be like, if this you want those plates, get. it comes with those napkins. <laughs> no one's going to remember. I don't Absolutely. remember. Absolutely. And I have a great memory for details. Yeah, that's... that's it just doesn't part. matter. It but just doesn't matter. It's kind of become an industry of like, every detail counts. And But it like makes you put so much pressure on it that it needs to be like a perfect thing too. And it doesn't. It just needs to be a lovely day where like people you love is, are coming to celebrate you. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't. No. Like, no. Release expectation. Release expectation. Ah. Namaste. Okay. <laughs> I thought that well, my team might have something to say about this, but they have, it's not part of it. What are you wearing for the wedding? That is a surprise. Can you give them a little idea? Yes. You can go on Broadway and see a very similar costume. Wow. That's true. We're both know. wearing flapper yeah, dresses. Oh, um, let me see. What show would that Which be? Which seems oh. absolutely insane. Uh, New York, New York. Because they're all wearing suits. I mean, yeah, but I feel like one of those suits probably is. No, pretty specifically. I actually saw a picture the other day and I said it. Um, give me a hint. Unintentionally. We're not going to say. Oh, wow. That's a little embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you after the fact. <laughs> okay, next. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's giving. <laughs> it's giving. What? Yeah, but we're both not. <laughs> no. Oh, no, it's empty. Um, let me, we can put it. We're gonna put it over here. <laughs> oh God. Fish Creek or Fish Crick? <laughs> did you write this? I did, but I didn't oh, like clearly. write okay, it. Right, right, yeah, right. Right. Um, but you care to explain? People in Wisconsin will call a creek a crick. I had a creek in my backyard growing up in Wisconsin, and my dad definitely called it a crick. It's Fish Creek. It's spelled C R E E K, not C R I C K. So. Right. It's a weird Wisconsin vowel. It's a weird Wisconsin vowel. But they don't actually do that a lot with other, I mean, I can't think of another I say, vowel that they mess no. up. No, but we do say big instead of bag. It's the A-E that really gets bad. Hard A. Yeah. 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 Why did you choose to become actors? Hmm. We didn't choose, forced upon us, in fact. Absolutely forced. <laughs> do you have an answer? I don't really have one. Sure. <laughs> I, I, I always liked entertaining my family and my friends, living theatrically, if you will. And I did it kind of as like a hobby-ish thing in high school and middle school. But I went to school to become a psychologist and in the pre-med track and found out I was spending all my time doing theater instead in Boston and at school. So I just liked it more. I connected with people better. It was a lifestyle that I thought I would enjoy more, being creative, working with people. Yeah, I think for me, the community made it easier to be myself. I didn't like have a great love for the art of acting until after I graduated college, which is sad. I just felt like I went to college for acting a little before I was ready for it, but I've always loved to sing and that's what really drew me to music theater. And I still love doing that. I just am very happy not having it be like my primary career right now. So. Yeah. But I think like as an art form, acting is so cool. The specificity and the playfulness and the stories that get to be told, I'm able to appreciate that much more now than I was when I was 18, like going into it. It's, I mean, very rarely are people at 18 or younger, like really. Yeah. You, I feel like you must have had to have had like really great teachers or mentors that or experiences like, yeah or yeah that like led you to that because otherwise it's just yeah just a lot of being 18 is like being like so embarrassed about everything and like shy and like you know not really knowing yourself and so like how can you really like learn how to be other people at that point in time you know although if you're 18 and like watching this you're like that's not me yeah then who's to say it might not be i'm so confident in myself at 18. nope no, I, was I was a fool okay Still a fool, but professionally now. Mm -hmm. Did you get a wedding planner? Nope. You look at Just them. us. <laughs> but you should. Absolutely. Should do that. When are you going to shave your chest? Me? Probably never unless they ask me to for something. Absolutely, I have the same answer. Really? Yeah. I don't want to shave my chest for any, like, I have no reason to. People in bodybuilding will always do it to like make their muscles look better and you're like, get over it. Well, maybe uh, it, it works for that, but like, no, yeah. Yeah. No reason I, to. I don't need to. It seems like they wrote that question, knowing something we don't know, like they know when. If you could have anyone sing at your wedding, who? We both had the same answer for this, probably. I don't know, maybe. Should we send this video to her? <laughs> yeah. There's a couple people we really love. We well, have a friend of ours that is singing at our wedding, and we are very, very excited about it. Yeah. Them. But someone you might know, mm. um, who is a recording artist, would be Shoshana, Shoshana Bean. Bean. Right. 
We, yeah. we go to a lot of Shoshana Bean concerts. We've been to like six of them. It's so funny. We're like big fans and like she's she's really amazing. Oh yeah. She's so special. If you don't know Shoshana Bean, check her out. That being said, I think there's something really cool about having a friend of ours and also someone's playing at the wedding, like friends of ours perform in the wedding is like really awesome. Sarah Beth, who I did the lightning thief with, she was Clarice and she's singing and it's gonna be so lovely. She's just the best. Yeah. yeah. Booked and blessed with that one. Um, do you two ever work out together? Every day. It's a lie. Sometimes. Uh, sometimes. Yeah. Occasionally. Yeah. Right. It depends on what we're doing. Like, if we're doing, if we are members of a CrossFit gym, then we'll take classes at the same time, something mm -hmm. like that. Sometimes we'll be doing private build together, or something like that. Um, it's just about schedules. Yeah. This summer has been tough because schedules have been wild. We like running together. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a good time to catch up. Mm hmm. Um, and I would prefer to work out in the afternoon, and Sam would prefer to work out in the morning, so. I'm just not gonna get it done. Afternoon, I'm too tired, too sleepy. Do you have any food intolerances that make it hard to eat healthy? Uh, I did an elimination diet and it said no. <laughs> that being said, doesn't eat peppers, doesn't really eat onions. Oh, so. that's true. Yeah, I got the stomach flu on peppers once, and I either am allergic to them or it was just bad timing, but since then I have not. To be fair, he ate like four bell peppers, like apples, at one time, which I think the capucin. Oh, I don't know. Oh, this is gonna make us look dumb. I don't. No one knows what that is. No, it's the little. It's the peppery chemical in peppers. Um, no. If you have too much of it, it can really mess you up. So. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of it. But I, I'm, I'm kind of uh, lactose intolerant. Dog. Kind of. <laughs> well, kind of. I can have some lactose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we all are kind of lactose intolerant, I would say. And. Uh, mm -hmm. That doesn't technically make it harder to eat healthier. I think it would be healthier for me to eat less cheese and ice cream, but I would be sadder, so. Yeah, I mean like dairy products are generally high in protein, so that is a little difficult if you're lactose intolerant, like really lactose intolerant. No yogurt. No yogurt. yogurt. She's, she's even together. like whey protein can screw you up a little bit, so. We soldier on. We soldier on. How do you stay committed to fitness? This, I'm interested in your answer for this. My answer was that I was not a very committed fitness boy, not that I really am now, but I'm much more now until the pandemic. And I had a lot of mm. time on my hands and a deep overwhelming sadness. <laughs> and I found mentally I do much better with a consistent fitness schedule. And that really, and also like living with you helped me develop that habit. Yeah. But I was like a, oh, maybe twice or three times a week if I could. And it was all over the place. Um, yeah. But I'm happy and I'm healthier and for the most part mentally more well. Yeah, I feel like if I'm low on my fitness motivation, then I go to classes. I'll go to like okay. CrossFit classes. Yep. I find that much easier to just like schedule it and do an hour. And also I like to train for things. That keeps me motivated. Likes to train last minute for things we must say. Well, sometimes it's last minute. But you know what? If you stay ready, you don't gotta get ready. That's true. Who said that? Me. No. The Rock. I would have guessed The Rock too. <laughs> and I don't know. We should put it up, put it up there. Yeah, I'd say Take something to train for, be in a community. Join Pride Fit. Hmm? <laughs> not sponsored by Pride Fit. This is a that's not a right. tag that I took off something that fell into the bowl. Ah. How particular are you with things like flowers, table settings, etc.? Generally? No, I think for the wedding. Yes, but generally highly particular. <laughs> things do not enter the house unless they have that's form true. and function. That's true. Yeah. Sam's sister gave me a great book on French homemaking. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is how I live my life. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. very particular about that. With yeah. the wedding? Say la vie. vie. It's all gonna be in French, oh, too. You know I mean? <laughs> we may be going to Italy, but we know French. <laughs> Why did Jared study psychology? Oh, um, many reasons. I knew I wanted to be a doctor. Um, I'd wanted to be a doctor for a long time, but my sister had cancer when she was 11, um, so I think I was around a lot of people, trying to help people, which I really loved. Um, and I was good at science. And my mom was a psychologist, a counseling psychologist, so I liked that that was very interpersonal and sciencey, and, you know, relationship-based. So yeah, it felt like liberal artsy plus sciencey, which is nice. Um, but now I'm just a very liberal artsy, sciencey actor. And you knew that your future husband's dad was a neuropsychologist, and you weren't right. able to talk to him. Yes, yes. <laughs> but honestly, the stuff that he is good at and does a lot of in work was the classes that I was not so good at. <laughs> <laughs> you could have called him up? Uh, well, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a good one to end on. Top three thump. Top three things to do in <laughs> NYC that aren't touristy. Okay, I have one. One of my favorite things to do is the Django, which is underneath the Roxy Hotel. You do have to get a reservation, but it's this 
Every night they have some jazz band that comes in, it's different. And the drinks are really good and the band is so cool. It's just like an underground club and it feels so... Yeah, very cool space. Yeah, very, very cool to bring like family and stuff too. Yes. I love a picnic in the park. Yeah, that's great. We love our city parks, Central Park, which I just forgot the name of, or Riverside Park, <laughs> or Battery Park to look at the... It's a fake park. No, but you can have a picnic there and you like, you um. don't need to do the touristy, yuck my yum. <laughs> um, what else is that a, isn't touristy? Um, the Cloisters Museum. Oh, well, go to the Cloisters. At that the... is a little touristy, but not- They don't really go there because it's so far. It's mm. at the top of the island. Highly suggest the Cloisters. We've been a lot. It's we... like, yeah, at least three times. The underrated museum of the city, I would mm. say. And we want our house to look like that. A uh, cloister. Look up a cloister. We I'm want a cloister. Up, don't put up a picture. If you didn't know what a cloister was, look it up. Look it up. It's, it's like a. Hello. Shh. Let's give one more. One more. Um, I mean, I guess like maybe it's touristy for sure, but it's not like as touristy. It's like Titanic or something. Like some some off Broadway show sure. that is like pretty buzzy. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I think that that's a good one. I think we forget that like New York has obviously massive Broadway commercial theater. Yeah. But it also has like really niche, lovely, wonderfully crafted off-Broadway theater. Yeah. That is also some of the best in the country and worth doing. And if you do a little research, you'll find something that you're interested in because there's so many different yeah. genres. So like there's Titanic, that's like a standard show, but then there's some like immersive ones too, like Sleep No More. Sleep No More. Well, or really touristy now, but like even like- yeah, Gatsby is doing something. Yeah, I mean yeah. like, yeah. There are lots of off-Broadway things that you can do, and sometimes they're not very good, but a lot of times they're really, really special because they're so close and intimate and, yeah. And sometimes you get to see a show off-Broadway before it goes to Broadway because people are like, oh my gosh, that was amazing, let's show it to a larger audience. Yeah, maybe like going to a show at like Joe's Pub or at the Public, or seeing a show at the Public, which is where a lot of shows will try out before they transfer to Broadway. That's not very touristy, a lot of tourists don't go no, to the Public. No. Um, but you might see, you might strike gold there. Or second See stage. Hamilton before yeah. it goes to Broadway, you know, like some people did. Not us. Not us. Nope. Well. Well. How lovely. How nice. Thanks for doing this, that. Of course. So sweet. Love mm, you. Love you. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Okay. We'll see y'all next time. Au revoir. Uh, yeah. I wonder if this can come out before the wedding. Avredici. <sighs> He's really sorry. Attenzione, pickpocket. Arrivederci. <laughs> Bye! Bye.